coming to you live and direct from Tortola in the Virgin Islands. You're watching 284 Media. Thank you so much for joining us. As you all may be aware, presently there is a case in the High Court of the Virgin Islands. It's concluded now involving a same-sex couple, both Virgin Islanders, who were married in 2019 in the United Kingdom and have subsequently sought legal recognition of their union within the BVI. They are seeking that the court decide in favor of recognizing their union. The BVI Christian Council of the Virgin Islands was granted permission to join the Attorney General of the Virgin Islands as an interested party on the same-sex marriage case that is in the High Court against the government of the Virgin Islands in a four-day hearing. And we sat down with one of the two members of that legal team, Ms. Andrea M. Williams, founder and CEO, Christian Concern and the Christian Legal Center. Now, viewers, in continuing the conversation and gathering various perspectives, I am today joined by Father Sean Major Campbell of Jamaica, who has been a supporter of the LGBT community. Father Sean Major Campbell is joining me virtually today out of Jamaica to give his take on the discussion. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. When you're in need of air conditioning, installation, repairs, or replacement services, Markinson Air Conditioning and Refrigeration has the professional technicians, equipment, parts, and ACs to get the job done right. Markinson Air Conditioning and Refrigeration carries top brands like Daikin, Aircon, Mitsubishi, and more. We're open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Located in Fish Bay. Telephone 340-4114 or 343-9511. Markinson Air Conditioning and Refrigeration, providing exceptional services to the British Virgin Islands since 2015. Jesus, that learn your long like church service. Hmm. Alright, let me enjoy the rest of the day. Next customer in line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come, yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay, I'll take care of it. What? No, no man, protect me. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. <laughs> you want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with Hero Bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top-Up Turn-Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top-Up is sold and top-up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top-up or what? Eh? So tonight, I am an international musician and also a bandman. Let's go behind the scenes. This is how I live my life, unlimited, with CCT. Viewers, welcome back and thank you so much for your time. As mentioned, I'm Ron Grant and you're watching 284 Media out of Tortola in the Virgin Islands. Uh, Father Sean Major Campbell, thank you so much for your time and welcome to our platform. Thank you too. I want to begin. You're most welcome. Thank you for your time. I want to begin by asking uh, your position on same-sex marriage. Before we get into the discussion, what is your, uh, what is your take on same-sex marriage? Or, uh, in addition to that, uh, same-sex unions? Okay, first of all, just to note that as an advocate for human rights, I, I, I seek to advocate for all human beings. 
So I do not specialize in a particular segment of humanity, but all of humanity. I often like to note, especially in Caribbean contexts, when I am asked about same-sex marriage, that there is a broader subject that we are yet to address, and it is the subject of human sexuality. We really have not had that conversation in our various jurisdictions. Instead, we have been held hostage by little sayings, little clips, little anecdotes that say things like, God never make Adam and Steve, but God make Adam and Eve. And that is the beginning and the ending of human sexuality education for many people in the Caribbean. And this is unfortunate. So that conversation, I believe, is a necessary one. Regarding same gender unions, marriage, again, my approach is one of equality. I believe that when persons advocate for marriage equality, they are not in any way, shape or form asking for other people to change their views or their position. So for example, some years ago when it was decided in Jamaica that people should not be discriminated on the grounds of marital status, or when it was decided that common law unions would be recognized under the law. Nobody got in a quarrel and fight and said, oh, they are forcing common law union on us. No, because that's not the purpose. If you do not believe in living in a common law union context, simply do not live in it. And if the church does not believe that its members should live in such context, continue to teach that. But it is not our place to seek to make into law our particular doctrinal positions. That's not how we live effectively and functionally in a plural society. And these are conversations that we need to face honestly. Understood. Now, I want to uh, speak a bit about your work uh, that you've done with the LGBT community, uh, not only uh, in Jamaica, but across the region. Uh, give us a bit of a background in, into how you've been able to assist them uh, on the matter of equality. Not sure what the reach has been, but I have been involved in various conferences and platforms where I have sought to, to bring other perspectives. Something we had in Jamaica some time ago, may have been 2017, was the Intimate Conviction Conference, where we had speakers from across the globe examining the, the church and anti-sodomy laws and, and, and looking at how misguided much of that approach has been. Um, also facilitating Bible studies where we look at the whole matter of stigma and discrimination. Um, looking at how stigma and discrimination has really not helped the fight against HIV and AIDS, looking at how as Christians and as church, we have had a history of using our religion, using our Bible to actually support certain crimes against humanity, racism, uh, white supremacy, uh, slavery, all of these, the church has held the Bible, hugged it tightly and preached evangelism and Christianity while 
promoting the cause of these negative experiences against humanity. And today we are seeing this in relation to the LGBTQI plus community. Uh, Father Campbell, so I have I to ask you because you have uh, one the sorry, of go ahead. To, uh, yes, so I believe it is, it is important as someone from the space of church to speak honestly and open to these concerns. I'm happy that you mentioned that because in speaking honestly, honestly and open, I'm sure that over the course of your time as um, a leader, you might have gotten uh, quite a bit of backlash. What has the response been from not only the church, but the public when they hear your stance and your take on, on, on such matters? Well, I have had responses to a great degree indicating that I will be going to hell, that God is condemning me, uh, people praying that I'll be swallowed in an earthquake. Um, and these are Christians, by the way. Uh, most of the persons who are concerned that I need to be saved uh, most of the persons, well, the truth is all of the persons talking like that and, and, and who see me as going to hell are actually Christians who like to speak of how blessed and highly favored they are. They are not interested in governance issues. They are not interested in concerns around uh, the environment, global climate change, things like that. Their basic focus is on condemning LGBT persons, uh, fighting against sexual and reproductive health rights, and it leaves them feeling really holy and accomplished. It's interesting that you, uh, you mentioned some of those examples because as I mentioned in the introduction, the BVI Christian Council is totally against this request and had two attorneys uh, represent them as an interested partner alongside the attorney general in the case. Now, as a matter of fact, in the hearings, the team representing the Christian Council have argued that the BVI Constitution does not fall under English law and that there is no legal requirement or jurisdiction for same-sex marriage to be introduced um, uh, to the islands. They have also argued that any chance or sorry any change uh, to the status quo must come from the BVI legislator. I want you to uh, uh, share your take um, on th those arguments. I, I find that calls for well certainly the, the, the legislature would, would play a most important role but I think it is important, certainly in our Caribbean contexts, to be aware of how the, 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 the political arm and the legal arms, you know, fall prey to the, the tyranny of, of the religious rights and, and also the an approach that sometimes appears to be what I would call that of the Christian Taliban. It does not facilitate conversation. It does not facilitate respect for others. The only interest is we must protect our doctrine. And in protecting our doctrine, we protect salvation and we speak up for Jesus and all these different things. The truth is, when we protect everybody, it makes a difference for the quality of all our lives. Because as you have probably heard before, where justice is not done for any group, any segment of society, justice is actually diminished for all. Now, I'm happy that you mentioned the legal aspect, uh, Father Campbell, because in our Constitution, under the Section for Fundamental Rights and Freedoms, there is a uh, 
portion for the protection for private and family life and the protection of the right to marry and found a family. Now, it would appear from the argument that the same-sex couples who love each other um, and decide to form a life together are somehow supposed to be deprived of these fundamental rights and freedoms that are afforded to every single citizen. Uh, is this your interpretation as well? Correct. Um, if we are going to be speaking the language of equality, then we must also understand the basic principles, UDHR principles nonetheless, of, of indivisibility and universality. So we can't share up rights, we cannot share up the, the concept of equality. Some people are not more equal than others. These are basic principles that we should be talking about. In your view, what rights, if any, uh, would you say same-sex couples uh, should be entitled to or perhaps should not? Um, based on your statements, I'm assuming that uh, in your opinion, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that the same rights of uh, another citizen should be the same rights as the same-sex couples as well. Correct. Correct. That's it. So, so everyone is equal under the law and the rights are universal. All right, I want to speak on the, the reliance of the Bible. When it comes to sex unions, it seems to have been getting special treatment uh, from the BVI Christian Council. And I'm assuming as well uh, across the region it gets special attention. But I'm looking particularly at the BVI. When it comes to the gambling law, which was passed, the council was silent. When the marijuana law was passed, the council was also silent. As a man of the cloth, can you see why residents may see the BVI Christian Council's stance in relation to same-sex marriage and unions as hypocrisy. What is your take on this perceived religious hypocrisy in and of the churches and Christian Council? Well, um, understandably, in, 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 in our various contexts, the BVI no different, where capitalist philosophy is the driving force people will close a blind eye to whatever is putting money in their pockets um, yes it is hypocritical um, worthy of note the bible and certainly our agents of human rights are not seeking to represent the concerns, for example, as depicted in scripture, where individuals were being threatened with rape, whether in a same gender context or otherwise, or where individuals were involved in the fertility cults and temple prostitution and so forth. In fact, same gender love as protected or its protection advocated by human rights agents has nothing to do with much of what we see in the few texts in scripture which have been used as clever texts, texts to beat same gender individuals over their heads. And these are conversations that we need to have, we need to be honest about them. I have to ask you, as you are aware of the case that is presently before the High Court, what is your take on the two Virgin Islands women who are requiring that their 2019 uh, marriage, which was conducted in the UK, be recognized in the BVI? Do you think, uh, or do you believe, Father, is it your opinion uh, that they should be granted that request? It seems to me that it would be pretty harmless granting them the request because the request is not asking people, of, for example, with their various faith traditions to change anything about what they believe. The request is not calling on the government to, to change its laws. The request is simply saying, recognize our status, which, by the way, is recognized in other jurisdictions. That's, that's all they're requesting. Um, maybe we should... Um, try to put our, ourselves in the place of others and understand what it must 
feel like if someone who is as close to you as a spouse lacks agency in making very serious decisions about your life and this is the person you would like to make the decision in the event you had some type of emergency medical emergency you would want this person to make the decision but simply because somebody's faith tradition or somebody's political obligations you know does not meet with this you know supporting this position you must now suffer you must now be out in the cold and disregarded and your human dignity insulted just because others do not like that position when you are not asking them to change their views so this is it, it comes down to basic human decency compassion empathy understanding and these i no, believe it, are consistent consistent with the ethic of the gospel and the jesus's way of light and love and peace and compassion for everyone no i thank you for sharing that as i mentioned uh, in speaking to the the council for the bvi christian council um in many cases they spoke about the fact that if allowing this to happen it would potentially open uh, a pandora's box it would open a, a, a scary and i quote uh, mechanism for persons to feel as though they could automatically uh, uh, change they could automatically change laws that would would seemingly fit them when persons of the christian faith um, like yourself say that allowing this couple uh, their marriage to be recognized would open a pandora's box in the society what is your take on that I would probably wonder what exactly is meant because throughout our Caribbean societies, Pandora's box is wide open with child molestation and the incest and corruption and wickedness of all sorts. But when it is convenient, we speak as if all the evils of the world will be unleashed in a context just because same gender unions or couples are recognized it doesn't really make sense the government of the virgin islands will be taking this matter of same-sex marriage to the residents in the form of a referendum giving them seemingly all the say to decide the fate of the country in this regard what is your overall take on their decision and referendums in general i find that Referenda, you know, we run the risk when we use these. So we run the risk of um, being intellectually lazy and having people simply vote along party lines or along doctrinal lines vote versus engaging the broad subject area of respect and regard for others even if they are minorities and so uh, there is a larger challenge that we should seek to engage and it is how we protect everybody you know i like to remember again some years ago in jamaica when the government of the day decided that and the expression used i'm not sure if you're familiar with this expression no bastard no dead because there was a time when children born out of wedlock were mm -hmm. referred to as bastards or illegitimate correct and the government of the day simply took a position which declared that individuals were not to be discriminated or punished, etc., etc., on the basis of their marital status. There was a time when a teacher, if she got pregnant out of wedlock, she would have to leave her job. Thank God we have those days are behind us. Now, if that were put to referendum, 
what would have happened? Many people with their self-righteous approach would have kept that position in place. It is important. The reason we have governments and the reason we have democracies and thankfully not theocracies, the reason we have democracy is to protect plural society, protect everybody regardless of their religion or no religion. Remembering that right to religion should also mean, or freedom of religion should also mean freedom from religion. So we protect everybody. Understood. Now, in the final analysis, um, once this is brought to a referendum, uh, the society will essentially uh, decide, uh, leaving, of course, the 13 members. Essentially what the 13 members are doing, if you, if you look at it closely, is taking themselves out of the equation and allowing the society to decide. When it's all said and done, what do you say to the people of the Virgin Islands who perhaps will be voting in this referendum uh, in support of uh, same-sex marriage or same-sex unions? I would say people should try to see if they can allow their conscience to vote for, for everyone, to vote justice for one, justice for all, to vote for equality, to vote for equity. Because guess what? If the, if the group, if the country does not vote for equity and equality, you're going to find other minority groups suffering from the tyranny of the majority. Father Sean Major Campbell, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out and, of course, speaking with us. Uh, you are at your sanctuary. We could hear the steel pan in the background. I know you mentioned to me that there was a musical camp going on. Uh, so we thank you for taking the time out of your very busy schedule and uh, discussing this topic with us. And we continue to wish you well. Thank you, and peace and blessings be with you all. Viewers, that is all the time we have. You heard from Father Sean Major Campbell out of Jamaica, uh, who gave his take on the same-sex marriage case presently in the Virgin Islands. I want to thank you so much for joining us and uh, paying close attention uh, to this series as we seek to get the experts and opinions of those persons who are, are definitely um, in way of decision-making. I'm Ron Grant. Do have a beautiful rest of the day. Bye-bye.